Welcome everybody. I'm Scott Hill from flightclubict.com and I'm joined once again by Stephen Netherton. Stephen, say hello. Hey, I'm here too and we're ready to take a look at some Ezra Brooks. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll get right into it. Uh, Ezra Brooks, seven-year barrel strengths, uh, a, a new product to the market and even newer here to our market. Before we get into that tasting, uh, let's talk a little bit about Old Ezra Seven Year and Lexco. Stephen, once you once you take it from there. Yeah, so Old Ezra. Uh, in case you're curious, because you know the name Ezra Brooks. Yes, uh, we're talking about the same brand. Uh, the let's start at the top here. So Luxco is a company that's actually headquartered out of St. Louis, Missouri, but they. Um, get a product uh, from uh, what we think is Heaven Hill in Kentucky uh, for a few different brands. Um, one is Rebel Yell, uh, another is Ezra Brooks, um, and uh, what Luxco has been doing is sourcing that whiskey, like I said, from what we think is Heaven Hill, but in 2018 they completed their own construction of a distillery in Bardstown, Kentucky, so we'll see what the future has to hold for some of these Luxco brands. Um, Luxco itself was a brand that was purchased in the early 90s um, and so while it kind of breathed new life into a Rebel Yell brand a couple years ago by releasing that um, 10 year old 100 proof Rebel Yell single barrel um, that was really well received it's sort of doing the same thing here with Ezra Brooks. Ezra Brooks is a brand that's been around a while but then recently they released this old Ezra seven year barrel strength um, at a very reasonable price, and people were um, happy to, to see it. It was kind of a pleasant surprise. Um, even with the distribution uh, was kind of a pleasant surprise. We weren't sure if it was going to be just a selective distribution only to a few states. And then it um, kind of wound up here in, in Kansas in, uh, in short supply, but still uh, something's better than nothing, so we were happy to see it here. And, uh, yeah, it's, you know, Barrel proof bourbon with an age statement, even though it's less than 10 years. Um, this was priced right at $39.99, if I recall, which is pretty tough to beat. You know, the Rebel Yell 10 year single barrel has been a favorite of, of yours and mine. Uh, a great value sort of bourbon that really took a, a bottom shelf or lower shelf brand and actually created some brand equity in it. Uh, they seem to be doing the same thing now with with Ezra Brooks. You know, they've got their their black label. I think they've got an 80 and 90 proof black label that usually sits on that bottom shelf. And they've had uh, this old Ezra seven year 101 proof uh, whiskey that that's become quite popular in that 16, 16, 17 dollar uh, uh, price point. And now they come out with something that is, is is being well received as a higher end sort of product. So we were excited when it hit our market, we were excited to grab a bottle and we're excited to try it. Uh, but like what we normally do here at Flight Club, we, we, we try not to, to drink something in isolation. So we thought we would uh, bring a little bit of uh, comparison, a little contrast uh, to this old Ezra. Uh, Stephen, what, what is it we're gonna kind of try alongside this old Ezra? Well, um, we're tracing the roots back to Heaven Hill, and what we thought was, let's find another barrel strength Heaven Hill product out there. And uh, so we went ahead and landed actually on um, Elijah Craig. Now, the proof for Elijah Craig is, uh, you know, going to be greater um, with nearly all their batches compared to this Ezra. Um, and it's, of course, older. Uh, the Elijah Craig is going to be 12 years old. But here's what we thought. It's kind of like George C. Stagg and Stagg Jr. Let's see if uh, this old Ezra seven-year barrel proof could kind of be like Elijah Craig Jr. Yeah, that's a, it's an interesting comparison. We, we recently got together, and, and there's another video here on YouTube as well where we compared exactly those two and came to the conclusion that uh, the, the Stagg Jr. is a good product on its own but it certainly doesn't live up to that uh, George T. Stagg kind of level. Um, what do we expect here? I'm not exactly sure. We have a couple different bottles of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. I've got a more recent C917 batch at 131 proof. And I think you said you've got the 136 proof in the older bottle. Is that correct? Yeah, 136 proof. I think this is batch 
12, if I remember right. Well, let's get into the Elijah Craig second. Uh, let's start off with the old Ezra barrel strength uh, first, because that's uh, sort of our spotlight. This is 117 proof. Um, and it's uh, the only thing else I'm really seeing on the age is the seven year and the charcoal mellow is, is what it says. So uh, let's let's get into the nose. I mean, what jumps out at, at first to me on the nose is there are a lot of sweet fruity notes right away um you know even though the charcoal mellowed is right there on the label there there's not a, a a char or smoky um or even a powerful oak uh scent on the nose right up front it's really sweet and very fruity it's, it's definitely sweet i'm getting some sweet vanillas, some brown sugars um it's not a super complicated nose but it's a nice it's a nice nose it's got um Maybe like a little bit of like flat vanilla or cherry cola uh, nose to it, kind of in that that sweeter profile of a cola. Yeah, nice. and I would I would go ahead and even just combine those. It is kind of like a a cherry cola, uh, cherry vanilla uh, cola, uh, even because the the sweetness is kind of it's a syrupy kind of sweetness, and so you know like if you wanted to get it a vanilla shot and a cherry Coke, you know, if you were like at a, a Sonic drive-in or a place like that, this is the kind of effect that it has. Um, I don't get a lot of spice on the nose. I also actually don't even get a whole lot of ethanol despite the proof. Yeah, you can tell the proof is there, but it's, it's not a burning sensation. Um, and you're right. There's, there's really no oak to speak of here whatsoever. It's on the sweet end, but there's just not that, what I think of sort of that Heaven Hill Oak characteristic of some of their older products. Yeah, I don't think it, it gets into that kind of range. Um, but when you're starting to think of, you know, kind of the, the classic uh, bourbon kind of uh, scents, I think this has those in spades. Shall we uh, go ahead and give some... Uh, rankings some ratings as we go through here and yeah I'd be comfortable giving this um, a three and a half on the nose you know it, it, it lacks a complexity that maybe a, a score like a four out of five might get um, but I, I'd give it more than just a, a standard three score too yeah it, it's not complex but uh, not complex doesn't always mean not interesting or not good um, it can take those simple flavors and do them really well, which is what I think this does, which creates a, a more than satisfying experience. I'm, I'm a, I'm a three and a half. I'm, I'm kind of between a three, three and a half, but I, I'd go up to a three and a half on this. Yeah. Let's go in for the, let's go in for the palette here. There's a lot of corn sweetness right up front. Um, so it shifts a little bit towards, I think that, uh, end of the spectrum, a, a little bit away from the fruit. Um, but still, this is a very sweet profile, um, where you pick that up on the nose, it carries through in that front of the palate for sure. I get more of that brown sugar, maybe a Demerara type sugar, very sweet, not an overly refined type sweetness. It's not a, it's not a butterscotch or even kind of a, a a, a burnt caramel kind of flavor. It's 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 kind of a much younger sweetness to it. And again, there's there's that lack of of oak uh, or anything that would signify the age. Or we're not getting leathers. Um, none of that must uh, that we associate with the older bourbons. Um, it's it, it's just not there. Yeah, I get even um, the kind of sweetness that it is to me is like that caramel syrup. Uh, you might get like a couple of pumps in that in your, in your latte or something. And once you start getting down to the bottom of it, and it seems like there's only that left, um, maybe with some ice or something, um, that's the kind of even texture to some extent that this has. It's, a, it's an oily texture too. Um, and so I get a lot of that caramel sweetness. But then beneath that, I, I try to search, you know, my, my mind goes back to Heaven Hill and trying to think of like some of the nutty, uh, flavors that you'll get in some of those Heaven Hill bourbons. And I get a little bit, I think, of pecan um, in there. 
Um, but other than that, it, it's not a very nutty bourbon like some other Heaven Hill stuff is. I, I get a hint of spice, just the, the softest kind of rye spice on the on the palate. And for me, that, that nuttiness doesn't come in until the finish, kind of well into that finish. I, I, I get a little bit of it. I get a little of that soft, um, maybe uh, kind of a roasted peanut flavor, very soft. I do, I do agree with the almond. But for me, it comes way in. It would make a little bit of spice on the palate. Not, not super complex, uh, but overall pretty well done. Scores? Yeah, I'm still, I'm still processing the palate a little bit here, um, but I'm, I'm coming back to kind of that three and a half score on the palate, uh, kind of like where I was on the nose, and really for the same reason. Um, this might score a little bit higher, admittedly, for someone that prefers a, a really sweet, uh, bourbon. I'm not one of those people. Um, that doesn't mean I don't like it. Uh, so for me, I think three and a half is where it ends up landing on the palate. Yeah, I think so too. And I, I feel a little bit guilty, like I'm rushing us through the, the, the palate and, and the finish. I, I think why I, I feel that I'm, I'm doing that, and we didn't spend a lot of time on the finish. For me, I wasn't getting a lot new there other than that nuttiness that I described. Um, so I, there's just a lack of overall complexity to this that makes me feel like, you know, I, I, I tasted it, I threw out a few notes, I, I've got this one, and, and ready to move on. Um, I'm not meaning to rush, but that's just sort of my overall observation. I feel like I'm kind of done, uh, but I do end up, like I said, sort of in that three and a half on the, on the palate, um, and I'm probably close to that same three and a half on the finish. Are you, are you getting anything new else on the, on the finish that we haven't talked about? I'm getting a bit of black cherry um, on the finish, I think. But otherwise, it's one of those where, and some bourbons are just like this, where you know the palate and the finish really blend together. You can really just describe them as one category. Uh, there, there's not a big transition. Um, and so here, it, it's hard for me to give it a different score than I've been giving because there there's not a different dimension that the finish goes to as far as the length of the finish though i mean it's it's long enough that i don't feel like it, it comes to an abrupt end there, there, it doesn't take a turn towards something tannic or too dry or sour or anything like that um this one's just kind of like a just kind of a straight shooter and consistent with that i think you know i i keep coming back to a three and a half i think i'd score this the the same the whole way down <laughs> I went back as you were as you were talking there. Finally, on the finish, along with some of that nuttiness that I described, I think I finally got a little bit of oak and maybe some barrel bar notes. Um, you know, we've all talked about over time. You and I, at least, have talked about you know the loss of the the twelve year age statement on Elijah Craig and moving down to more of a nine year sort of profile, and, and that did take away some of the oak character to it. This has even less, much less of a character than even the new non-age dated Elijah Craig might have. Um, but it's that same sort of jump that we've seen from the 12 back to the 9, and then again, maybe that same jump back over the 7 year with a, a continued absence of that, of that strong oak note that we associate with the older Elijah Craig. Yeah, and I, and I think that... Um you know, some people would describe Elijah Craig as an oak bomb, and some people would hear that description and say, well, good. And other people would hear it and say, oh, that's that's not a good thing for me. This is definitely not an oak bomb. At the same time, though, it, it's aged long enough where it does not have that real young uh, wood kind of uh, flavor to it. Um, so seven years might be, might be a pretty nice little sweet spot here that they've hit. Let's pause this review we haven't given an overall score and we haven't given a value score. Let's pause that for a moment. Let's grab our Elijah Craig barrel proof. Let's give that a, a whirl. Um, you know, you and I have reviewed these enough batches enough times. We don't really need to score this. We don't need to give detailed tasting notes, but let's kind of work our way through the nose palette and finish, see what we get here. And that may help with all impression on the old Ezra barrel string. Yeah. Before I dive in here, as I kind of swirl my little bit in the glass, um, 
you know, Elijah Craig barrel proof. Now I think the price is creeping up, uh, based on what I've read, but also what I've seen locally here. Um, so now it's really tough to find these, I think for less than 60 to $65, it can be found. I think even in, um, our neighbors to the South in Oklahoma, you can get these for much less than probably anywhere else in the country. Um, but let's, let's come into this thinking, okay, you've got an extra five years of age and let's say just to be, um, generous, maybe to, to say that this is uh, an extra $20, uh, that this would cost. So we're, we're coming into that with maybe that general context. And an additional seven and a half percent on proof. Uh, like you said at the beginning, a lot of these are quite a bit higher. Um, and, and certainly the, the two that we have are in the 130s, which is a pretty significant jump from 117 up to the 130s. You get a little more bang for your buck at that $20 plus uh, uh, price point. Yeah, for sure. And right away. Right away. I'm, go ahead. <laughs> you were going to say, I think, the exact same thing I was. <laughs> and when I was nosing this, you say, right away, this has um, several more layers deep of... Um, there's just an abundance um, there in the nose that you can you can explore. You can go. What is that leather? Oh, the, there's the dark chocolate. Uh, the, there's the nut. There's some there's some fruit there too. Um, this has many more layers than that Ezra did. If we had a script, you couldn't have said what I was trying to say uh, any more clearly. That's exactly right. The complexity on this. It, it is just heads above that that old Ezra. The notes you described are right on those leathers, those uh, those aged notes, the uh, the cherry fruit. Um, it's just a much much more complex nose. These Elijah Craig barrel proofs also sometimes when they when they become magical is when they also tend towards like the tobacco spice um, and tobacco cream kind of flavors and, and scents. Uh, this particular batch for me doesn't quite go there, but it's something that that Ezra did not come near to, um, to reaching. Yeah, this uh, C917 wasn't one of my favorite batches either. And I just went in for the palate and the, and, and the finish as well, obviously. Um, and I get a, a very slight hint of that tobacco, tobacco cream that we talk about with some of these older ones. Um, but it's certainly not there like some of the other, uh, the, some of the 19 releases have been, 18 releases have been very, very good. Um, it, did you have a 19 release already this year? I've not seen it yet, um, although I, I think it has come out, the A119. Um, I haven't seen any reviews of it yet either. So when we get one, I'm sure we'll, we'll come back on here and do something else, but I um, haven't got my hands on one yet. Yeah, it, it may have been the 18 releases that I know we've talked about. Um, and there's, I mean, there's there's some winners and um, there's no losers in any of these, but um, there's some definite um, better batches than the other. This isn't one of the great ones, but it's still a little layers of complexity as we just talked about on the on the palette finish are just, uh, just much more there than they are in the old Ezra. Now, you know, the, the charcoal meddling, would come into play a little bit too with the difference between these you know heaven hill has some other stuff they do the charcoal mellowing too they do it with their evan williams stuff um there is uh another offshoot of heaven hill uh, the virgin 101 uh which is also seven year old bourbon it is charcoal filtered um heaven hill even has charcoal filtering with their uh mellow corn uh, uh their corn whiskey so uh Elijah Craig, however, is not a, a charcoal mellowed uh, bourbon. All of those probably, and then the Ezra too, are probably all the same mash bill. But the charcoal mellowing does, I think, have a little bit of difference to do with that flavor profile. Um, I think you can even taste that when you go from like Evan Williams to Elijah Craig. Yeah, and I, I tried this uh, old Ezra 7 year 101 proof earlier. And it reminds me a lot of those uh, Heaven Hill charcoal filtered products that have just this little bit of char character to them that that's a little bit sour to me. Um, 
I don't think I got that necessarily on the barrel strength. Uh, so, so who knows exactly how much charcoal filtration um, goes into it, but um, it, it's not in this, it's not in this Elijah Craig for sure. There's, there's some char notes at the end, but it's different than that charcoal filtration note. Yeah. Well, part of the reason why I think we, we brought out this Elijah Craig barrel proof was to say, maybe for the people out there that weren't able to get this old Ezra seven year could, um, would they be able to just go back to their Elijah Craig barrel proof and say, listen, I've, I've got this. So it's kind of been there, done that. But also conversely, for the people that could not get the old Ezra seven year, or could not get Elijah Craig barrel proof, I should say, but could get old Ezra seven, say, I don't need Elijah Craig barrel proof. I got this. It's less expensive. Yeah, it's a little bit younger, but it kind of gets me to the same place. My impression now, having both side by side, is they're apples and oranges. Um, you can see some relation. Uh, I'm not sure it's a, a junior senior sort of relationship. There's some relation there. Um, and, and maybe this is a good time to prompt the overall and value scores on the old Ezra. Uh, but you know, that, that $20 price difference, five year age difference, uh, there, there's a dramatic difference in the two products. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think this isn't a senior junior. This is a at nearest, uh, you know, a, a, an uncle nephew sort of a deal. Um, but yeah, so as far as uh, overall and then value, you know, overall for me on that old Ezra, I, I was a three and a half all the way down the line, and, and I'm not gonna change it now. I'm still a three and a half overall on the old Ezra. As far as value, though. Um, you know, at thirty nine ninety nine, uh, getting uh, seven years old, uh, barrel proof in today's market. Um, you know, when when bottles like Booker's are um, a little less than seven years old and barrel proof and are uh, about double that, um, I think it's a very good value. And I think I would put the value on this at um, at a four. Uh, is where I would, I think, stick it. It's not quite a four and a half for me, but I'd, I'd be comfortable giving this a four on value. It's it's really drinkable. Um, we talk about some of its competitors at the barrel proof or near barrel proof level uh, that are close in price. 1792 full proof uh, I, becomes really, really hot in comparison to this. Um, you start stepping up from there, you get bookers and you're, you're quite a bit higher uh, Elijah Craig quite a bit higher. Um, so from, from just an overall quality at this price point, drinkability standpoint, but, but still good flavors. Um, I, I think it's a good buy. Um, I, 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 I would, I'd be, a, I'd be a four. Yeah. Um, any other, okay, so we, we, we kind of entered, I think maybe we've answered the question, but do you have any takeaways on the uh, old Ezra barrel strength being an Elijah Craig barrel proof junior? Is this, is this, is this Craig junior as, as stag junior is to stag? I don't think so. Um, from the standpoint of they don't resemble each other uh, as well. Um, that uh, you, you can't see kind of the family resemblance, I guess, if you will. Um, but then also, um, you know, the, the price difference is not so great that, um, it, it should cause someone to, to feel kind of satisfied with, well, I got, I got the Ezra and I don't need to go after Elijah Craig real proof. No, do <laughs> it's, it's worth it. And it's not gonna, it's not gonna break the bank either. Um, so I walk away from this, not thinking that comparison really works. I think your price, uh, observation is, is right on. And certainly availability comes into play there. George T. Stagg is such a sought, sought after item in the BTAC collection. You know, we've been lucky to be able to, to, to pick up a few here and there. And the release numbers have been, have been uh, uh, bigger in the past couple of years, but it's still a very difficult product to find, at least in our market, the Stagg Jr. is an available product. There's a, there's a significant price difference. It's about twice the price on a retail level. On a non-retail level, you're looking at a, a fraction of the cost. And so from, from that standpoint, Stack Junior makes sense in that lineage. 
uh, with Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. We're seeing them available around here for 60 at retail. They're not on the shelf very long at $60. Uh, I can walk into a number of stores right now today and pick this up for 80 or 90 um, and probably make some deals on some of those and get it for less. So it's an available product at a 60 to $70. Um, and I'm not sure uh, Ezra Barrel Strength has any more availability and it's $40. That spread's just not there where this becomes uh, a fair alternative. Um, if I want Elijah Craig Barrel Proof Profile, I'll just go find Elijah Craig Barrel Proof Profile. I don't need to find a junior or, as you mentioned, a uncle, cousin, uncle, nephew type relationship. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the coming years when Luxco starts to transition over into their own stuff. You know, what they're going to do. It obviously takes a while to, to get something even, you know, out the door that can bear a seven year age statement. Um, but we'll see. I think they're headed in the right direction. I uh, mentioned earlier the Rebel Yell single barrel 10 year. It's been one of our favorites. We're giving this pretty high scores. Um, they know what they're doing. They're able to bring their brand equity from a bottom shelf up to a, you know, a middle or top shelf. And from that, I, you know, I give them credit. So I'm excited to see what they, what they've got in store with, with the next generation of these products. Keep in mind, you said they just opened in 2018 and maybe just started their distillation. So we're a ways off. We'll see how they can bridge their gap between now and then. But uh, in the meantime, they seem to be doing a, a, a pretty darn good job. Yes. Well, with that, any anything else, any other closing observations before we sign off? Well, and I, I hope folks can, can find this old Ezra. Um, because of the the affordability for sure to you know why not give it a try see if you like it um not sure how much more we'll get as far as a, a release is is concerned in the future i hope that doesn't impact the value of this as a, on a scarcity level um but we said this at the beginning it was kind of a pleasant surprise um i think it continues to be um and we'll see what the future holds Sounds great. I think that's a, a good way to sign off. So, Stephen, thank you very much. Uh, everybody out there, thanks for watching. And obviously, uh, check out the full review at flightclubict.com and some of our other hundreds of reviews. So with that, I think we'll sign off. Stephen, thank you. Yep. See you later.